In this week's Airs and Spares, the Princess of Wales has been pictured out and about. So will the wild internet rumours finally stop? I'm not confident in that, Katie. But coming up on my side of the Atlantic, Carrie and Meghan, hidden from the royal website only to return after an hour, was it due to backlash? Hello and welcome to Airs and Spares, the show where we bring you insight and opinion into the lives of two royal couples on both sides of the Atlantic that the world just can't stop talking about. I'm Kinsey Schofield and I'll be bringing you updates on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex here in California. And I'm Katie Nicholl and I'll have all the latest news from the Prince and Princess of Wales here in the UK. And now here in the States, the Duchess of Sussex has launched a lifestyle brand, possibly a new cooking show. And her husband, Prince Harry, um, they've had their profiles on the Buckingham Palace website kind of downgraded. But Katie, let's get into the latest on the Princess of Wales. Yes, absolutely, Kinsey. Well, finally, the Princess of Wales has been seen. Hold the front pages. Um, I think we've been waiting for this moment for a long time. And um, you you would think that this might sort of stamp out all the crazy conspiracy theories out there and all the peddlers of, of myth and, quite frankly, could I say absolute nonsense, but it seems not. Let's just, for those of you that haven't seen the images, the pictures that were published in The Sun and the video footage, um, the princess was filmed um, smiling alongside her husband, Prince of Wales, her husband. I know that wedding ring wasn't on, but she was there with her husband looking very happy, very relaxed, I think it's fair to say, during a visit to a farm shop in Windsor. Well, this is the first sighting of Kate. And by the looks of things, she is recovering really, really well, which, as I say, hopefully means we can put an end to all of this nonsense about her being in a coma or recovering some from some botched cosmetic surgery or whatever it is um, people out there are saying. Um, the video was filmed by a member of public. Um, I'm very curious to know, Kinsey, how much that would have been sold to the Sun for. Um, we can perhaps sort of speculate a little bit on that later, but um, it, it was footage taken of her and William out and about leaving a Windsor farm shop. Um, Kate can be seen with her hair down wearing um, a sort of a black fleece type jacket and leggings, very casual in, in trainers with very warm socks because it's still quite cold over here. She looks very relaxed. She's chatting to William. She's carrying um, well, what looks like a carrier bag, probably filled with produce. Now, I noticed watching that footage, she's walking at quite a brisk pace. She's carrying a shopping bag. Um, she doesn't look like someone who's struggling or who's who's um, finding it hard to walk in any way. Um, you know, she's sort of not got her hair done. She's not fully made up, but then she never is when she's off duty. But I look at that footage and see someone who's um, who's doing really well um, and who is hopefully going to be fit and well enough to return to full time royal duties and outwardly public facing duties after Easter, which is, of course, what Kensington Palace has said. And um, the guidance was that after she'd had this abdominal surgery, it would be a pretty lengthy recovery period and we wouldn't be seeing her in public until after the Easter, which I think makes all of the speculation about her whereabouts and that hashtag where's Kate that was trending on all social media platforms a little bit laughable. Um, of course, it, it wasn't laughable, really. It all became quite serious. And one can only imagine for the Princess of Wales as she's home trying to recover, pretty um, frustrating and probably rather upsetting. Kinsey, what did you make of the video footage? And then perhaps we can get into a little bit about The Sun and the risk that they took in publishing that. Because, of course, the media have been asked to leave her alone. But what did you make of that footage? Oh, I thought she looked beautiful. I agree with you that she looked happy and healthy. Even just watching her, she's engaging a little bit with Prince William, which you love to see. I, that, I'm so glad you said that about the cost of the photo because I wanted to ask you, uh, in the States, this has been branded a TMZ Sun exclusive. So I was wondering if perhaps the cost was so ludicrous that these two entities went in together to, to, to buy this photo, to pay for this photo because I imagined, you know, why share unless the the price tag was so enormous that you thought, you know what, let's split this with another media outlet on the other side of the pond um, so that we're not having to fork over so much money. Uh, otherwise, I can't justify a Sun and TMZ collaboration. Can you? 
No, you're quite right. It's unusual for two sort of big rival tabloid news outlets to sort of team up. And perhaps you're absolutely right. The the cost factor was was made that a necessary thing to do. Um, I'm not sure if we know whether that footage was taken by a member of the public. Um, you would you would suspect that most unwitting members of the public, someone that's just there, happens to be eagle-eyed enough to spot the princess, um, possibly wouldn't actually know how much that sort of footage would be worth unless they were super savvy and, 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 and very canny about this. So I suspect these are details that we'll probably never find out. Um, but I think, you know, the princess will have been quite surprised to have been photographed and filmed going about her day-to-day -day business. I know that um, when they're in Anmer in Norfolk and also when they're in Windsor, um, they're pretty relaxed. They're pretty left alone by the locals. They sort of blend into the background. Um, you know, you notice William was wearing a baseball cap. That's, that's pretty much the norm for him. Um, and, uh, you know, most of the time they get away going around their daily business without drawing too much attention to themselves. But I suppose given that, you know, her whereabouts has become the lead item on news bulletins on the BBC and around the world and, you know, the subject of speculation on Twitter and the top trending story, I suppose anyone that was going to spot her probably knew that um, that they, they were going to be able to command a very high price for that footage and those images. But I think this also opens up a wider debate as well in terms of um, the relationship between the media and the palace. Now, if this had just been printed on TMZ, you know, we know TMZ really do push those boundaries there. Um, they've got a different code of conduct when it comes to the, the very stringent privacy laws. But the Sun, um, the Sun have to abide by UK privacy laws. Now, they've pushed those boundaries before. I mean, let's not forget that it was the Sun who splashed on the very first image of William and Kate when they were an item kissing on the slopes in Closters all those years ago. And that led to them being um, barred from royal events, I think, um, or certainly from photographing royal events for some time because the palace was so cross that they sort of breached that media agreement between the palace and the press. So are there going to be repercussions for the Sun in, in all of this? Because they have technically breached that agreement that Kate wouldn't be photographed while she was recovering. Or does this breach of privacy actually work in the palace's favour because they haven't actually had to come out and make a comment. They're certainly not endorsing these pictures, um, but they haven't had to come out and make a comment. And actually this feeds into the narrative that they have wanted to put out all along, which is actually these conspiracy theories are wild and pretty irresponsible and the princess is recovering well. Agree. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see if anything happens with the Sun too. Of course, they're justifying this by saying that they felt like it was in the princess's best interest that everybody see that she was happy and healthy based on all of the social media activity. Um, really quickly before we move on, I'm glad you brought up her ring because that is one of the biggest arguments we're hearing in the States. Where is her ring? She always wears her ring. But as I'm sure you'll recall, um, you know, Princess Diana would joke about how that ring was such a menace. And she had the, the famous black sheep sweater and she tore a huge hole into her first black sheep sweater, sent the sweater back to Warm and Wonderful and said, could you please help me fix it or send me another one? My engagement ring ripped a hole in it. This is one of my favorite sweaters. So they sent her a brand new one, uh, you know, over the last, I think 12 months, they auctioned it off for over a million dollars, the original that someone found in their attic along with that note from Diana. So this is not an easy, delicate, you know, just this is not the type of ring you want to wear after a serious abdominal surgery. You don't want to be tearing your sweaters. You don't want to be knocking things around in the kitchen. Uh, I think that that's one of the lamest arguments I've seen to justify some of the rumors that have circulated online. Do, do you agree the lack of ring? Not everybody wears theirs all the time. No, well, I mean, Kinsey, she would have had to have taken it off when she went into hospital for that surgery because you can't wear any jewelry when you're going in for a procedure. Um, you know, you, you, you can swell up during an operation or with the drugs post-operation um you know when you hear about people having to have engagement rings or wedding rings sawn off because they actually can't get them off their hands post post-operation so she would have removed them before the operation i suspect it's not been a priority necessarily getting getting that ring back on her finger i am willing to put money on the fact that when we do see her back in public after easter and whatever engagement that's going to be that ring will be there gleaming sparkling in all its weighty wonder and um you know back where it belongs on her finger but I, yes i agree with you i think far too much has been 
has been made into the fact that it was absent. But while we're on the subject of pictures and, of course, that picture which we were discussing last week, the, the digitally manipulated image that was sent out on Mother's Day, which, of course, only fueled into that whole conspiracy theory about where Kate was at a time when the palace were really trying to reassure a pretty panicked public that she was fine. Um, news is emerging of another digitally altered image, copyright of the Duchess of Cambridge as she was there. And this is a picture that I'm sure many of you will remember. And uh, I, this is a picture that I'm sure most of you will remember, a very wonderful picture of, of the Queen surrounded by all of her great grandchildren and taken by, um, as she then was, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate. Um, and we are now being told by at least one picture agency that that also is showing evidence of being digitally enhanced. Well, when you consider how many small people there are in that image, and goodness knows how many frames were taken before everyone was looking at the camera at the right time, I'm really not surprised. I mean, is someone going to go through every image that the princess has taken? And, I, you know, let's not forget, she's really broken the mold in taking royal photographs. She was the one that started that trend of taking royal photographs of her children. Are we going to be analysing every single one of them and seeing which has had any computer wizardry done on it? I think I said this last time, Kinsey, you know, the days of just taking a photograph and putting it out are long gone. Um, you know, digital manipulation is a relatively new thing. Airbrushing certainly is not. And when you're putting a picture out of the Queen and her, her great-grandchildren um, and a picture that's going to be in the history books, of course it's going to have gone through some retouching. So I, I really think that um, we could be going down a, a, a pretty slippery slope and opening a rather endless can of worms if this is where we're fixated on how much her images have been digitally retouched. I agree. And to me, it is a product of the Princess of Wales. That is something, whether retouched or not, um, to me, that's, that's a piece of art that she created. And as somebody that... Uh, is just a lover of the royal family, a lover of the history of the royal family. That is still an, an exciting and important, um, you know, product to me. Uh, so while there might be something askew, I, I don't mind because that is something that she put out into the world that she worked on herself. And to me, that that is, uh, it's a lot. It's to me, it's a, a more of a privilege than having a, a random photographer in there shooting something and then, you know, us not having a relationship with that person. It's it, it's far more exciting to know that she was behind the camera and and perhaps she did the alterations herself. To me, that that is still uh, worthy, newsworthy and, and something that we should. I don't know. It, it does feel like they're they're being critical of her work. It feels like they're putting down something that she has been so proud of and something that she's worked very hard at. And uh, that disappoints me because that's a, you know, you're being vulnerable when you put that content out into the world. And now people are, are criticizing it, which I think is a bit unfair. And she herself has described herself as an amateur photography. She doesn't claim to be uh, amongst the ranks of, of David Bailey or you know, famous royal photographers. You know, this sort of started out as a hobby. She trained with, um, with a lovely chap called Alistair Morrison, a photographer who I interviewed for my book about, about Kate. And, you know, he said she was a wonderful student, keen to learn, did develop into a really talented photographer, which she did, but um, this is not this is not her sole job. This is a hobby. So I think it's absolutely to be expected that her images are not going to be absolutely perfect and probably do require a bit of a bit of touching up. But we digress and we must move back to things that are happening on your side of the pond, Kinsey, and particularly with what's been going have on to, Katie. with do the we have royal to? website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Prince Harry and Meghan, they've been shuffled around the official Buckingham Palace website. And Katie, I just would love to know the person that is refreshing the Buckingham Palace website to catch something like this. Um, because uh, the headlines yesterday were that Harry and Meghan were yanked from the website. All of a sudden, they, they appeared back on the website. They had very... Uh, I don't I want to say fluffy bios on on the website over the last few years. They've had uh, biographies that just made them look very glowing, um, you know, very uh, 4000 words now versus a combined um, part on the site next to Prince Andrew. Harry and Meghan are now a couple on the website. From They went from 4000 words to now 500 words, um, you know, I know a lot of people are making a big deal out of this, but we've seen the evolution of the website since Queen Elizabeth has passed away. This 
and I believe they've kind of, they've kind of said it through through the their language. I don't know if this is necessarily a priority for this monarchy right now. Updating the website, getting it. This is not um, taking Harry and Meghan off or shortening their their bios. I think it's happened organically. I don't think that this is anyone being punished for anything. I don't think that there's a big statement uh, being made here. Um, they're no longer senior members of the work, uh, senior working members of the royal family. Yeah, why wouldn't they be pushed down to the bottom with Prince Andrew, who is also no longer a senior working member of the royal family? Um, so I, I saw this trending online. I know I saw a lot of people getting excited about this. I really don't have an opinion on it. I think that the royal family probably um, just want is slowly cleaning up their website. Yes, I mean, I, don't, I, I wonder whether there was anything to do with the timing, because, of course, it came off the back of Meghan launching her own website, which I know, Kinsey, you're going to talk us through in, in a minute. But I, I think it was probably a little overdue. Um, Harry and Meghan have not been working members of the royal family since 2019. We're now 2024. So I think it's probably high time. There was a bit of spring cleaning. And am I surprised that they've sort of been pushed down the website and, and become a bit of an afterthought? Not really, and um, they're not there representing the royal family um, in, in any prominent role whatsoever. Um, so I think they're probably um, situated where, where they might expect to be as non-working members of the royal family, but of course still members of the royal family. I suspect um, they won't appreciate being put down um, alongside Prince Andrew, but I'm afraid that's where they are, non-working royals. <laughs> Right. Well, you've made a really good point about timing um, because I have talked to several branding experts, you know, mostly in the fashion industry, because I feel like Meg, that, that's an arena. Lifestyle kind of fits into that arena. Uh, but some of the experts I spoke to that work in branding and marketing in New York City felt like the timing of Megan's launch for American Riviera Orchard was a little suspicious. I, they even said it, Anderson Cooper said it on CNN, that they felt like, you know, to launch this in the middle of such a media frenzy over the Princess of Wales um, and not have a product, you know, to just be, have a landing page where you collect email addresses, to just have an Instagram that doesn't really have content, it has a logo. They said, you know, was this the best strategy? Shouldn't she have launched it when she had something tangible to sell? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the ultimate? Objective there, and they said the ultimate objective did seem to take advantage of the circumstances surrounding Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and all of that media attention, uh, and just saying, "Hey, look, I'm over here, and and I'm doing this because we can't buy anything from American Riviera um, Orchard right now online. You can follow her on Instagram, but she hasn't posted anything." Um, since the video that was surprisingly, I feel like we're seeing, and you and I have had this conversation recently, but we're seeing Megan kind of Tig Megan at work doing Tig Megan things again, because there's been an evolution in social media since Megan had the Tig. Today, the algorithm prioritizes shorts. The algorithm prioritizes video. So when you go to Megan's page and what's there for you today, is just a logo that's broken up into several different um, rows. Uh, that's not what pops on social media today. That's what popped on social media maybe five to, I mean, I'd say maybe 10 years ago. Um, so I do really feel like Megan is the brains behind a lot of what we're seeing as uh, American Riviera, Riviera Orchard is laid out. Um, I, don't, I don't love the timing. But I, I love that you said, I wonder if they were removed or are changed on the website because of this launch, because it is kind of unfair for Megan to have that place card on the Royal website that gives her all of that credibility when she's launching something uh, of re, you know, that seems to be retail oriented. 
Yes, and I think just also on that point of timing, let's not forget the Prince of Wales had just delivered quite an important speech, hadn't he, at the Diana Legacy Awards, which sort of almost became overshadowed by Meghan's announcement. And I agree with you, Kinsey, sort of big hype over a landing page. Um, I suppose it's it's the ultimate teaser. I don't know, maybe Meghan thinks she's done Catherine a favour by taking some of the heat and those eyeballs off of the craziness on Twitter and putting them back on, on her across the pond. Um, Possibly that's how she sees it. I think most people do see it as probably, um, you know, pretty, um, pretty coincidental timing, um, all designed to sort of get Megan and this new project back in the headlines when it's it's gone pretty quiet on her. So um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, in terms of what this website is going to look like, in terms of whether it's going to be like the TIG or whether, and I think it's probably going to be more like Goop. I mean, I think we're going to see Megan selling homeware, cookery books, tablewares. I think all of that sort of thing is really going to be on the cards. And, you know, that does open up the question as whether they're going to stay on the royal website, Kinsey, because if they're going to capitalise as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, or Megan's going to capitalise as the Duchess of Sussex by actually selling things, then I think that raises big questions because, of course, the agreement when they left was that they would um, respect the history and heritage of the royal family and, and would be respectful of the brand. Well, let's see what this website exactly is going to entail. We have to hold tight for that. We, we're we're going to just have to submit our email address and see what comes what comes after that. All right, really quickly, and I'll just say this to kind of get get the chat going. Um, sources have claimed that Meghan Markle is set to return to Netflix with a cooking show that you know is going to kind of be within the American Riviera Orchard space, just to probably promote the the types of products you're going to be able to find on her website. Um, I. I don't know if you have an opinion on that. Obviously, I'll say if you are watching this and you have an opinion on it, we'd love to know your comments. Uh, so just make sure you comment below. Um, but Katie, do you have do you have any any comment on on the possibility of a cooking show? Well, I don't have any intel from from anyone at Netflix. Um, I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility. I mean, we know that she's not going to go back into acting. We know that she loves cooking. She's a pretty good cook. And like you say, if that sort of blends into the new um, into the new website and her whole lifestyle ethos, then I, I think I've learned to say with this couple, never say never, Kinsey. All right. That's a very good point. Yeah, and I believe it was Andrew Morton's book that said that when she had gone over there to meet Prince Harry, she'd also met with agents about developing a cooking travel show for her. So when I heard this, I thought, uh, again, pre-Harry, we're just going back to the drawing board. And that's fine because she was clearly doing something right because a prince fell in love with her. Like So it's like clearly she was on the right path. Um, but Katie, it's been such a joy to talk to you today. Um, if you you agree with Katie and I about some of these topics, if you are excited for American Riviera Orchard or you're not, let us know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to Talk TV. We're here every week and uh, we enjoy spending this time with you.